Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This is another paid request. This time for Brian. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, commentaries, topics, reactions, randomness, out of blueness, whatever it may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box under the video. And this is a film called T34. I guess the best way to put this it's a Russian film. Apparently it became one of the most successful Russian films. And it's kind of like if Michael Bay did a World War II tank movie. Only if you don't have the crass humor in a Michael Bay film. It's a bit long in the tooth. It's about 2 hours and 20 minutes. I don't think it needed to be that long. I think the middle section is a bit slow. But it has a fairly good first 30, 40 minutes. And the finale is pretty decent too. <clears throat> and I think if you're a fan of action films, if at all the idea of an action film involving a tank interests you, this is well worth a look. <clears throat> now the version I saw was a subtitle version, which to me was the preferred version. Because a lot of times... If you hear a dub and it's very awkward dubbing, it, it takes something away from the experience. <coughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's just my preference. And like I said, it takes place in World War II is from the Russian perspective, which is a little bit different. Because usually you see it from the American perspective. This is the Russians attacking the Germans. And our lead guy is this lieutenant commander who's out with this other guy cutting down this sign and a very nice snowy background like you tell there was a bit of a budget behind this really good cinematography uh, very solid camera work and from the opening when him and this other guy are in this truck and they're out maneuvering this tank that's chasing them the movie has a tendency to do Michael Bay type of slow motion where the bad guy, or even the good guy later on, will shoot a shell, and it will go in a slow motion, the shell coming out of the barrel, going down the, the landscape, and either clipping the truck, or going barely past the truck, or clipping the tank, and you get some really cool looking, and the effects are decent for a Russian film, maybe they're not as crisp as an American film, but you get some really cool looking... I would say this. This is one of the, the best... For sequences involving tanks battling each other, this is some of the best stuff I've seen. Especially in quite a while. And... If you don't use CG, this is using CG well enough as a tool. Because as they outmaneuver and they escape... Our lead guy gets his truck where he needs to go. And his next job is to have these three other people under his command. And the four of them in this one tank and protect his village. And from then on to like almost halfway through the film. Well, not halfway, but about 40 minutes into the film. Is them protecting this village against quite a few tanks. And how they take out these tanks. At least most of them. And... I'm like, wow, for a film I knew nothing about. This came out in 2019. I had never heard of this film before. And I'm like, wow, these are some really nice looking action sequences. I mean, it's like the director said, you know what, I want to attempt Michael Bay type of shots. But again, it is more of a serious film. It doesn't have the crass humor that... And I, I like Michael Bay as a director. Here's the thing. I love The Rock with Sean Connery. To me, it's a great James Bond film, just in hiding. Just, to me, Sean Connery is playing James Bond in that. I love Bad Boys 1 and 2. I like The Island with Ewan McGregor. It's just when he produces stuff like those bullshit Ninja Turtle movies, that's when he runs awry, in my opinion. And a film like Pearl Harbor, 
it's not really his forte. This is like what Michael Bay was trying to do with Pearl Harbor. This does more successfully. Do you get like these nice angles as they're protecting the village? There's a point where they have armor piercing, and you have this shot where it shoot these two tanks of the bad guys. They've been shot, and then it freezes, and then the camera pans slowly. Not quite bullet time, but slowly goes back to where it came from. And oh my god, the good guy, you know, the Russian tank, is hidden under this stuff. And it's shot from his hiding place. And it took two out in one blow. And then it's, they're going around this village who's, it's now empty. They got the people out and they're trying to attack the, the Germans. And they're like hiding in a house and shooting through a house. And they're going in and out. I mean, it's... Pretty damn cool stuff. I'm sitting there going... I actually enjoy this more as a tank movie than that movie Fury with Brad Pitt. And I didn't hate that movie, but I would say I like this movie even more. Very stylistic way of shooting tank sequences like this. And it did pretty intense with the camera work. Even in the third act of the film, when they have a showdown and the nighttime landscape within this other place, I forget exactly the name of the location, as they're like playing this cat and mouse game, and there's a point later on where the two tanks, the German tank and one of their tanks, they got to turn the turret, and they're both turning. As like, okay, who's going to make it? Who's going to make it? Oh, this guy's rolling faster. Oh, this guy's barely going to make it as this is turning. The director... <coughs> well, I do think in the middle portion, I see the pacing kind of hurts a little bit. But not enough to deter the film and it's being a, a bad movie. Not in the slightest. I think this is... A pretty decent fucking film. If you like action films, if you like, I know it sounds weird, movies involving tanks, tank action, uh, this is well worth a watch. This is well worth a watch. The lead guy, like the acting is good. There's not a lot of personality to the characters, to be fair. Or at least the lead guy. There's not a lot of like, personality to the lead guy. But at the same time, he does good a jo good job as this driven person who wants to get his job done. And at one point he was driven to escape. Driven to get out of the situation with his acting and look he has in his eyes. He wants to get this job done and he wants to go home. And yeah, I'm just saying it's not, whether I don't know if it was the actor, maybe just a little bit more of the writing, where I wouldn't say you learn a whole lot about the characters, but like the acting is more than decent. The lead Russian guy and this German bad guy, they definitely have a bit of a, almost a rivalry with each other, which I liked that little motif they did. I mean, they get more into spoilers starting now. Spoilers. As they're protecting the village, they take out a couple of these tanks. But at one point, they get shot. And again, just the way it's done with the angles, and you really see how shell... It never, it's never confusing. It's the opposite of the schizophrenic editing, which was refreshing to see. Ultimately, they get taken down of the four men. Two of them die. The lieutenant commander and the driver are still alive, but they're wounded. They get captured. And then you cut to about three years later. They're prisoners of war. And the German guy that caught them, he's hired by these other people to get their men trained in tank maneuvers. And they're like, well, we need to get some Russian guy, at least the one tank, 
see how they work, see how they maneuver. They won't have live rounds, but do this little test and gets our men so we could get better. So uh, they get a Russian translator, this female, this lady who you know, obviously, like I said, translates. The German remembers this Russian lieutenant commander, so he gets him, and the guy gets a, another crew of three. The driver he had before, and two other guys. And like I said, there's not a whole a lot of development on them, Sally. And that's how I think the middle portion kind of suffers. I did the acting's not bad. The cinematography is decent. Again, some really good looking shots. Like when you see the, the camp that they're in. These wide panning shots where you see there's literally thousands of prisoners in this camp. This really good looking aerial shot. I mean, the director definitely has a nice visual eye for the story. It's just either the middle portion needed even even a bit more either a bit more development of the characters or a little bit more personality showcase with them. Or if you want to be more streamlined, you need to cut about in the middle portion maybe twenty minutes or so, give or take. Uh, 30 minutes sounds like a lot. Again, yeah, I just I don't think this story needed 2 hours and 20 minutes. It's not a complicated story. They're fighting tanks. Of the four men, two are killed, two are captured. They're hired to do these tests. As they're cleaning up this tank, there's a secret compartment they find with live rounds. They're able to bury the bodies that was left over in this tank. But by doing so, they hide some of these live rounds. So that when they do their live test, they're able to sneak, get the live rounds, put them in there, shoot at the bad guys, and escape. And then the chase is on. Like I said, it's not an overcomplicated film, which I appreciate. At least they don't attempt to do like a romance between the lead and the Russian translator. Well, they're both Russian, the lead and the translator. At the very end, you find out why. Well, no. I take that back. I take that back. I fucked up. I don't know keep going because I did fuck up. Because my mind did blot that out. They did attempt to do that. That was my least favorite part of the, of the film. See, people are like, what are you talking about? Are you drunk? No, maybe I should start drinking. I'm drinking. I drink Mellow Yellow, but maybe I should start drinking. Or use narcotics. Maybe it should start. But. I, I guess they do try to attempt. This is like the reason the guy says yes. is because the German says I'm going to kill this translator if you say no. And then she goes please let me come with you. I'll even steal a map so you can get through this landmine. This minefield. And I just. I don't. I don't think it was needed 100% to have a little bit of lovey-dovey stuff. I, yeah, I don't think it was needed. Because not every movie needs a love story. It wasn't like this terrible, awful, egregious stuff. But there's a lot of times... I, I'll mention another one. I love Sylvester Stallone films. At least... Not the past 10 years of stuff, but... A lot of his filmography in the past. I enjoy a film called Daylight. With Stallone, and he's in a tunnel, he's rescuing these people. They try to put a little bit of love story. It's not a full front where they're kissing, making out, but they try to do a bit of lovey dovey stuff. I don't think that was needed. Not every film needs to put a love story in it. Again, I really enjoyed Daylight. That's one of the few issues I have with it. It's like, oh, no time for love, Dr. Jones. Same with here. I think you, you didn't necessarily need that. Maybe they thought, okay, we need a little bit of a human core to it, but I think the fact that they're escaping and they miss their home and they miss Mother Russia, I think that would be more than enough. But again, that's just me. So again, while I do think a bit more work on the characters, a little bit more meat to their bones would have been appreciated, I think as an action film, as a visual experience, 
it's easily well worth a watch. Uh, and the escape attempt when they're driving backwards, you have these nice wide shots. Is it where this is one point where the the German lead bad guy and the others are in this tower, and the Russian as they're escaping it fires and it goes slow mo, and you see it enter the tower. And as it's going in slow mo, the camera kind of pans around the shell, and you see this this some one some bitch German officer. The shell's going right towards his head. There towards the cousin. I was like, Pfft. I said I was surprised. Maybe people would get tired of the slow mo. Maybe they'll get a bit annoyed. Oh God, I did. To me, each time they did it, I thought it looked cool. Like in. The third act, as they're doing the finale, fighting some of these other tanks that are chasing after them. There's a bit where they shoot a shell. They shoot to the ground so that it bounces off the ground. And then it goes ricocheting up into the a German tank. Like I said, it's, it ends with like a tank dog fight. At the very core, like I say, it's worth a watch just for that. For some nice, well-staged action sequences. It doesn't have any stupid, egregious humor. The acting, I have no issues with. The score, don't really have a lot of issues with. Cinematography. The effects, for a Russian film that doesn't have, you know, the... 200... You know, it doesn't have... Avengers money of a budget to spend. But I thought it was pretty decent for what they were doing. Like I said, I think if you had a little bit of the human drama that you saw like the Brad Pitt film Fury, a little bit more of that. Or even if you had if if the lead was I'm not a fan of Inglorious Bastards. I'm just not. That's one Tarantino film I've never been a fan of. But I really enjoyed Brad Pitt's performance. If you ever seen that film, you think of Brad Pitt's performance and the type of character he played. If you had that type of character as the lead in this, I think he'd be even a lot better. Nothing against the guy who played the lead. His acting was fine and serviceable and not bad at all. I'm just saying if you had a character like Brad Pitt's character and Brad Pitt himself... And in Glorious Bastards, and you took him and you put that in this movie. Is it wait a minute? Brad Pitt was in Fury. I know. I'm saying his character in Glorious Bastards. He did a good job in Fury as well, but yeah, I like Brad Pitt. Or I didn't. Which I know doesn't make sense because this is a Russian film. But if you had, like I said, a little bit more. But at the same time, like I said, it's not bad either. At least the, the lead does incorporate a bit of intensity. Like when he's getting ready for the dog fight. And they're just going toward I just I don't want to spoil other stuff, but like I said, if you truncate the running time a bit if you give a little bit more meat to some of the characters, I think it would be even better. But as it is, this would be probably at least a, at least a three and a half out of five star movie, at least, just for the look of it, exciting tank action sequences, uh, better than some of the stuff I've seen in Hollywood. I, yeah, I just I like the way it was done. I'd never seen a tank movie like that, so it was cool to see. better than when Michael Bay is it's a better film than a lot of the Transformer films Michael Bay made yeah yeah T-34 pretty damn decent film I was I was surprised pleasantly surprised by it so again if you like action films if you're an action fan like I am action films are my number one favorite genre I would say give it a look so with that said thanks for watching We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.